There is nothing comfortable about Beethoven. He was not a composer. He was not a man. You know how modern people say, especially in America, where I lived for 11 years, people go, are you comfortable with that decision? Beethoven would have laughed his head off. The idea that you should spend even a nanosecond of your life being comfortable was utterly repulsive to him. To him, the point of life was you strain every muscle and every emotion until you are living at the maximum level of intensity. And that, I think, is part of the power of his music. It makes it incredibly awkward for musicians. Um, but for audiences and people who remember his music, it's like, well, it's Napoleonic. It's like seeing a man who lived at a different level than the rest of us live most of our lives. And it's very inspiring because we know that those men did live like that. And they did change the world in a way. But for most of us, as we, especially when you get to my age, you make a cup of cocoa and get out your comfortable slippers and curl up in front of the television. That, that wasn't for them, those people. They, want to, they wanted everything to be about extremes. And he is very, very extreme. And there are moments in all our lives where we don't want that extremeness. And other great composers were also very, very interested in the extreme. Wagner was interested in writing operas that were simply three times as long as anybody else's operas, because it's impossible to sing, play for that long. But earlier people were too. I mean, Mozart, whom, Mozart and Beethoven knew one another, not well, but a bit, and they were both, of course, the geniuses of the day. And Mozart writes music that requires, it's a different kind of extremity, it requires a delicacy that is more extreme than most people can do. Which is why some people don't like playing Mozart, because it may, they feel that they sound like a bull in a china shop. Because he's asking for such superhuman lightness, like a trapeze artist, that they go, I, I can't do that. Um, Bach is another one, which is very extraordinary. He writes, he's one of the most prolific vocal composers of all time, and he writes against the voice all the time. I remember as a, a young man, I sang in choirs a lot, and I remember doing the B minor mass, or and you, your throat was aching the next day, absolutely aching because it's so hard. But that tells you something I think about art. There's a false idea we have in the language of modern art, uh, in the language of modern life, that we think that art is there to express something. This idea of expression is a very modern idea and it has roots in things like psychiatry and psychotherapy and psychoanalysis. Oh, we've all got something inside us which we have to express. Well, no, we haven't, actually. It's a wrong idea. And it's certainly a wrong idea about art, that for most of these great people in our past, the art was not about expression. It was about embodying. It was about enacting. It was about going through, or as the great English Romantic poet Keats put it, burn through. He talked about the experience of art as being, you burn through the work of art. So it's like walking through flame. Very romantic idea, of course. And Beethoven, to me, is a composer you burn through, both as a performer and as a listener. And his idea certainly was that when you burned through that music, you would emerge on the other side a changed person. It's very grand. It's wanting to change people. Well, he lived in the age of the French Revolution. He lived in the age of Napoleon. He lived just after the American Revolution. All of that was about changing people. All of the struggle for justice and freedom and science and getting rid of superstition and introducing hygiene and lifting the poor up from the horrific um, conditions in which they lived and still live. All of that was about changing things. And you don't change things by being comfortable. Being comfortable is the conservative option with a small c. 
Um, it's about keeping things the way they were. But none of these people wanted to keep things the way they were. They wanted to make the world a different place. And I would have said that's an always inspiring message. <laughs>